And we're joined now by Alex Henry, who made that famous kick. Alex, former Husker kicker, how are you this morning? Uh, doing well. Thanks for having me on. Hey, good morning, Alex. You know, you know, it's 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 interesting to talk to you. We were just talking about some of you know. I coach with Coach Queen and Coach Lamanji. We were talking about pregame rituals, and yeah. uh, you were the topic of conversation a couple of weeks ago. And lo and behold, I get to talk to you two weeks later, man. How you been? <laughs> good, good. Hopefully, my pregame rituals were pretty good. Yeah, they they were mesmerized. I, Coach Monty tells the story. I was like, I just was watching him kick, and I was like, Oh my gosh! I was telling my coaches, "You got to come see this guy." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And, and you know, he's not very emotional. So to hear him tell a story like, for, and and have like an affinity for somebody, I, it was like, wow. He must have really yep. liked Alex because he didn't say anything nice about <laughs> a, whole of, a whole lot of people. Man, it's good to talk to you. Yeah, you too. Alex, let's let's jump right into this Colorado rivalry. We were, I was talking with DB in the first segment. He's got a certain perspective on this team. Obviously, when you were playing Colorado, they weren't nearly kind of in the the program as deep as they were when DB was playing. But it still seemed like there was quite a bit of animosity there. Like, how did that team feel when Colorado was on the schedule? Yeah, it, it's definitely just one of those, you know rivalry tradition games that you know um, you know it's on the schedule and you uh gear up for it as the week comes and it's one of those that you you definitely want to win when you when you look at your overall schedule so it's just one of those things get everyone knew knew about it knew the the history on it and it was uh, always a fun game to to be a part of alex let me ask you something it's it's from uh because ravi was asking about like managing emotions and I tried to generalize it, but it may actually be specific for particular position groups. When you're dealing from a kicking standpoint, right, that isolated singular moment for what you do, do you feel like or did you have to channel and process emotions differently than like, let's say, the other 10 guys that may be on the field? Yeah, I think I think the big difference is, you know, as a as a kicker, you you're not out there all the time. Right. So it's, you only have certain, you may only get three, four opportunities a game. And, you know, if you're playing in Colorado and people are yelling at you and, you know, you, you got to really focus in when your time's called and make sure you're ready to go. It's just, you know, you may only get one shot at it. And if you're not in the right headset or head mindset or whatever, you're, you're, uh, you're not going to perform when you need to perform. And so it's just trying to, Block out all the noise and make sure you're you're ready to go when it, your number's called. And um, that's probably the biggest difference from from all the other guys is just trying to capitalize on your opportunities when you're called on. So. Alex, I've always been curious when you're in that moment. You know, let's obviously you've got the the famous Colorado kick um, and that set the school record for for the field goal. When you're in that moment, do you allow yourself to think about? kind of the context of the game or is it always just hey this is the job go make the kick like are you thinking time and score and 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 sort of game situation at all or is it just all about that particular kick yeah you you do in game situations just because you you want to be ready to go and kind of know you know hey we we need a field goal here or hey we you know i'm not going to be really up probably because we need a touchdown or you know that kind of thing um, so you, you're always thinking that, always trying to stay into the game. It was my mindset. You know, I never just wanted to wait till the, they're like, oh, you're up and off we go. It was more, <laughs> kind of game and, you know, you know, act, you act like you're part of part of the bigger picture of the game and not just focus on yourself. So well, and then it's just controlling. The big thing is just controlling your emotions when it's coming, it's, you know. If you know that you know your team's got the ball in the twenty and they got to make a drive to kick a field goal here, it now it's you know you you know it's coming and it's how do you handle those situations and how do you prepare yourself to um, be able to handle the you know what happens to your body as as those emotions start start flowing. So that's the big thing is just being able to control those those aspects and getting the mind right, and ready to go. 
Uh, Alec, talking with Alex Henry here, the former Husker great. Well, actually, I always, I always want struggle with former. Like I almost never say former. I think you're always, always a Husker. You're always going to be a Husker A train. But let me, Alex. Let me, let me, let me ask you something. Just on a, a different level. Obviously, I coached Tristan uh, Alvano for. Uh, his career at at Westside and talk to him all the time and it, there's this falling back on your training model right that that goes with athletics and the repetition and recreating the moment he's had had, had some injuries um he's working through that had some emotional ups and downs kicking if you were going to open up a school right and you're going to say hey listen pressure pack situations it's never easy we're going through three or four times a day you or a game you've always got to be on where do you fall on the falling back on your training versus just staying in the moment because it seems like with a lot of the special teams guys the preparation is so regimented i always i always wonder if you guys like forget to have fun right <laughs> i mean Erstad was super high, strong, and you're vi- you guys are very, very particular. What's that balance like? Yeah, it's 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 interesting. You know, kicking is a lot like golf. It's you know you can go to the range and hit all day. It's trying to put yourself in situations that when your number's called, and I always I always explain it as you know you're playing basketball at home and you got five seconds left. You're Michael Jordan trying to hit the last second shot, trying to put you in those situations in a practice to be ready for when that situation comes on a game day, trying to make it more lifelike. Right. So yes, yes. A lot of everything is, you know, Hey, you're going to the driving range and you're hitting the, trying to hit the same ball all the time from different angles, but um, it's trying to simulate, you know, really what, what a game winning field goal could feel like. And, you know, I, there, I do a camp during the summer and, and we try to put kids and take them out of your element of just saying, Hey, everything may not go right when you're out there on the field, but try to put you in situations that you know how to handle things when things don't go right or something's a little off or you're, you know, you stumble on your steps or all that kind of thing. There's a lot of things that can go wrong that can get in your mind and, just trying to simulate that and being ready for for a game from, situation like that. From high school to college to the NFL, I'm seeing a lot more injuries with specialists, but you guys are also bigger, faster, stronger. It's it's crazy to see on a Sunday in the NFL. I mean, guys just routinely making field goals 55, from 55 yeah. yards out, right? It's like these guys yeah. have these hammers now, like – What's changed in your opinion with the training that has added to this this superior leg strength that we've been seeing here the last handful of years? I think so so much of it is um, kids are specializing at at such a young age and there's there's so many more kids at this age that are specializing in kicking than even just say back when I was kicking, you know. Um, I played soccer and I did kicking for fun and you know <laughs> I think uh, I just, I, I just wound up in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, you know, all those, you know, Darren Erstead, Sam Cook, Brett Maher, they're all, you know, I feel like we were all really good athletes that kind of fell into kicking. I think today's day, there's a lot of really good athletes that are trying to specialize in it from such a early of an age where, you know, mm. in the past that may not have been the case. So it's, I, I don't know that that's my thought, but. Do, do you equate it to like these pitchers now that throw so hard and we've seen all these arm injuries, like with the power and the strength that comes from kicking you, the evolution is you're just going to see the, the frequency of injuries increase. Yeah. And I, I think there's, there's a certain, you know, I mean, much like, I don't know anything about pitching, but much like pitching and kicking, there's a certain way you can do it that you, you're not, you know, if you're using your groin and your your weak muscles to kick, there's the, the likelihood of you injuring yourself is a lot higher than if you're actually turning your foot over, getting your knee straight to your target. So you're using your quads and your hammies. Mm. There's a lo- much less, you know, app for for getting hurt. So it's, I, I would say, you know, there's. The kickers these days are so strong. It's just when I when I work with guys, it's trying to get them so they're 
they're using the right muscles and they're not going to injure themselves and trying to take care of them to get more longevity out of their leg, much like a pitcher. Mm. Alex, we appreciate you joining us. We hope you enjoy the game tomorrow. And I hope the uh, result is just like the last time Nebraska played Colorado when the coach's kid was playing quarterback. Yes, yes. Go Huskers. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Appreciate <laughs> it. Alex, we appreciate it. That's Alex Thanks Henry. On. Husker, not a former Husker, always a Husker, <laughs> and the owner of the longest field goal in Nebraska history. We appreciate him joining us.